uh, very good afternoon uh, we will start this parallel uh, technical session uh, 32 hall d uh, today uh, to conduct this session uh, we have been requested the professor premalata k of anna university chennai to chair the session and uh, for co chairing this session uh, we have requested dr manas kumar bhoy pdu gandhinagar so then we have three uh, lectures uh, lined up one is soap lecture uh, state of the art special lecture by professor murli krishna and then uh, followed by a special lecture by professor abhishek kumar of iit guwahati and one more special lecture by professor rangaswamy of nid calicut let me have the pleasure of introducing the chair and co chair to the delegates uh, yeah professor premalata is working as professor in the division of soil mechanics and foundation engineering department of civil engineering college of engineering gindi anna university and very old college <laughs> chennai she has 34 years of experience in teaching and uh, she was awarded the achievement award for research in 2002 at anna university she was the head of the division of soil mechanics and foundation engineering from 2013 to 2018 she has published over 100 papers in international journals and conferences she was the president of the society of civil engineers 2014 to 15 cg she is the executive committee member igs and building committee member alumni association of cg uh, and we have the organizing committee i extend a hearty welcome to you madam thank you sir and uh, uh, let me introduce uh, the co-chair uh, dr manas kumar boy uh, he is working as assistant professor in the department of uh, civil engineering pandit din dayal energy institute gandhinagar previously this was uh, called pdpu and he works in the area of ground improvement and on behalf of the organizing committee i extend a hearty welcome to you sir thank you sir now i request uh, the chair and co chair to take over the session and uh, conduct further proceedings over to you madam and uh, manas sir please thank you for the nice introduction sir uh, i am very much uh, honored that uh, by giving this opportunity to chair this session in this session we have three speakers eminent speakers uh, the first speaker i let me introduce first speaker first and let me give the lecture then we have question answer then we'll go for this uh, second lecture the first lecture we may give, all the lecture we may give 20 to 25 minutes for this uh, for that then we'll take 5 minutes for a question answer at the end of each lecture that's right sir yeah yeah so, that, that, uh, now i introduce uh, i'm very much uh, honored to introduce uh, professor murli krishna Murli Krishna is a professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering in IIT Tirupati. Before joining IIT Tirupati in May 2009, he was the faculty member at Department of Civil Engineering and IIT Tirupati. In, and uh, he, I, I think he has conducted the Indian Geotechnical Conference IGC 2019 in a grand manner. We were there. Uh, Dr. Murli Krishna obtained doctoral degree program from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, M.Tech from IIT Kanpur, B.Tech from Sri Vengadeshwara University College of Engineering, Tirupati. His research interests include earthquake geotechnics, geosynthetics, and ground improvement, site characterization, numerical and physical modeling of geotechnical structures. He is the recipient of BRNS Young Scientist Research Award, Boy, Boy Scout Fellowship, and Heritage Fellowship. He was a visiting fellow at the Bristol University, UK, Surrey University, UK, and University Torino in Italy. He supervised seven doctoral students, 24 master's students, co-authored nearly 180 publications in international journals, conferences, book chapters. Professor Gurli Krishna is an executive member in and life fellow of ISET and life fellow of Indian Geotechnical Society. and he is also member of tc203 of international society of soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering since 
also he is a national executive committee member in the indian geotechnical society main chapter so i welcome professor murli krishna to deliver his lecture uh, thank you uh, uh, dr manas and thank you professor kamlata uh, uh, i thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to deliver this uh, sfp lecture and uh, i congratulate whole organizing team led by professor uh, tej sitaram and uh, excellently organizing this whole program online event uh, in a 3d platform uh, smoothly going on i congratulate all the team so let me start my uh, presentation uh, so we are in the last session of the whole technical feast we are having all the three all three days we had and today is the fourth day in the last session uh, i hope you all had good lectures and all so today my topic is on seismic analysis of pile uh, foundations using an integrated approach so the content uh, will go uh, like this one and uh, earthquake induced failures and pile damage uh, a briefly i will mention and uh, how the piles under seismic loading what are uh, some issues uh, we can uh, briefly discuss and then what is integrated seismic analysis what are various stages uh, will uh, put forward and then uh, what are the various methods available in the seismic analysis of pile foundations in a, a crisply we can just quickly review and then uh, we focus on what is a simplified integrated method and a exemplary study as example case study will be taken and then concluding to make this out i organize my talk uh, i before going further i would like to acknowledge uh, the uh, uh, my co-author dr pradeep kumar he was my research scholar at iit guwahati currently he is an assistant professor of department in uh, department of civil and infrastructural engineering at iit jodhpur and also i would like to acknowledge my collaborator yeah. professor sugumai bhattacharya uh, who is the uh, faculty and uh, uh, in university of sare uk uh, who was a host for my boss course fellowship and then subsequently he hosted uh, dr pradeep also uh, for his commonwealth fellowship uh, visit at uh, university of sare uh, some of these works are in collaboration of uh, uh, the subhi and uh, pradeep that's why so let me uh, go to the uh, talk and uh, some pictures uh, showing the pile damages uh, during earthquakes uh, of course several examples uh, can be seen some buildings got failed uh, bridges got failed and uh, the main reason if you see some of these uh, uh, failures the structure as a whole looking like looks to be okay but there were the issues with the uh, foundations which can be noticed Uh, under the different uh, earthquake uh, uh, conditions a uh, uh, little more closer to these uh, uh, failures if you see the uh, a bridge failure million dollar bridge uh, uh, failed which was reported by bhattacharya at all 2013 and also foundation failure if you see uh, if you see the structure was totally intact you can see okay so the reasons for this one whether the is it superstructure failure or uh, foundation failure of course the examples what we are showing here are not the structural failures uh, they are the foundation failures are uh, significant here so in general the failures uh, in all the failures not really the structural failures some failure foundation failures also will be there underlying soil for any structure where is underlying soil play a key role in overall stability of the particular structure in terms of the site response uh, to a particular earthquake motion or in terms of the liquefaction potential at that particular uh, uh, earthquake condition so how it would be behave so that's how it will de uh, define the whole uh, earthquake scenario and uh, disaster uh, scenario so how the uh, piles under seismic loading with these quick examples let us uh, uh, put out some points here uh, so uh, what soils naturally they exist in multi layered soils with variation of the properties so this is one point to note there is a different contrast in the layer properties layer behavior under particular given earthquake conditions that would be there uh, and in many of these earthquake conditions 
uh, the soft soils are most affected due to the interference effects and also layering effects which are generally uh, affecting the uh, whole file foundation behavior so what these ground conditions would do they strongly affect the pile behavior in terms of the changing the failure mechanism there are different failure mechanisms are there uh, i'm not uh, uh, going to into details like bending failure and buckling failure okay uh, etc different failure mechanisms are there so that failure mechanism what is there that will play an important role in the design and uh, location of the zone the ground where it is located what is the seismicity of the particular uh, uh, condition that also uh, significantly play a role in the performance of that piles under seismic loading and particularly the problem of soil liquefaction is uh, significantly uh, affects the pile behavior so what it will do when the soil is going to liquefy uh, there is a substantial loss of the strength and stiffness uh, because of the increase in the pore water pressure so uh, that lateral confinement of the pile foundation uh, would be losing then uh, obviously the pile behavior would be totally changing whole ground natural frequency of the whole ground would be differing and uh, response to the particular earthquake motion would be differing all such issues would be arising due to the uh, soil liquefaction condition and then uh, when you when the particular ground is subjected to the earthquake condition and also possible to have soil liquefaction the whole pile soil system uh, would be going into the non linear conditions and uh, non linearity of the soil behavior non linearity of the pile soil interface behavior and pile behavior etc all those things would be coming into picture which completely make the whole problem as a, it's a complex dynamic soil structure interaction problem so which we need to handle in this particular to solve this particular problem so when we look uh, closely into the what would happen in the local site effects and uh, on foundations we can see a, a a typical picture representing the uh, what are the local site effects from the source is uh, earthquake is generated from the this particular location focus of earthquake and it is traveling up to the site where the site is considered here uh, here we uh, a, a typical example of a which foundation is shown but this can be of any ground any place there can be a uh, building or any structure it can be there and uh, surface uh, earthquake waves which are generated from the source which will traveling to the site and from the site bedrock it would be traveling upwards right and then it affects the structure so we need to take care uh, into all these effects into the consideration by analyzing any structure for the seismic uh, uh, insurance stability insurance so with this uh, whole uh, considering whole things so this is a, a integrated seismic analysis strategy uh, for uh, any geotechnical structure uh, we can say particularly but it is mentioned here as a pile foundation what's the thing so what we need to have we need to have the different input parameters we need to have so one is this uh, uh, seismic uh, so we need to we need to uh, have this uh, seismic hazard assessment of the particular site so what are the pca values what is the magnitude values we should have what the seismicity nearby seismicity past earthquake levels all those things we have to study and particularly at the particular site where the structure is located what is the ground profile what is the possible ground water conditions is required and then what is the type of the structure which is coming okay now what type of the structure what is the loads etc so those details also need to be there and then when you have the soil conditions we need to perform the Uh, advanced soil testing condition to, to uh, identify the strength and stiffness of the properties uh, particularly because we are dealing with the uh, uh, seismic conditions we need to have the dynamic characterization of the soil and once you get the inputs from this one we need to perform the ground response analysis to understand the how the ground motion at the bedrock is transferring to the on the surface where it is touching the actually the uh, superstructure so, uh, superstructure so how it is getting modified what are the effects how what is the frequency content variation all those things need to be considered uh, by inputting the parameters what we identify in the advanced soil testing and then uh, we have to do the performance based assessment the particular structure analysis need to be done 
to see the whether the particular structure is performing well uh, or not so of course there are certain uh, logical things can be taken if the performance criteria is satisfied it's fine if it is not satisfied then we have to revise the designs or whether ground modification pile foundation design either the superstructure modifications etc we have to see finally we have to close the structure whether the structure is uh, seismically safe that's what we have to do the thing so in this whole process uh, uh, there are various steps involved in the particular thing one the step one is the quantification of the seismic hazard as it mentioned we need to obtain the expected pza moment magnitude etc and of course when the uh, a structure uh, is a complicated very sensitive structure and a huge budget structure then one can perform the site specific uh, deterministic seismic hazard analysis dsha or probabilistic seismic hazard analysis to get the uh, ground motions at the particular site particularly this will be done in very uh, high sensitive structure for example nuclear power plants etc or otherwise we can also use some uh, other literature available data and if for the normal general structures we can use the quadrilateral coefficients for getting the uh, seismicity uh, quantification of the seismic hazard or seismicity of the particular area Uh, coming to the second step is the site characterization and site response analysis, where we need to obtain the soil information in terms of the layering and also dynamic characterization, liquefaction potential, etc. Need to be obtained. The obtained parameters shall be used to conduct the free field ground response analysis to be performed uh, by any of the methods available. And the data, whatever we obtain from these uh, above two steps, will be used for performing the integrated seismic analysis considering the superstructure and also taking the ground condition effects uh, etc into the uh, whole thing to get a complete picture and a complete performance behavior of a, a superstructure what are intended structure uh, under consideration uh, so uh, then come to the third stage there is seismic analysis of deep foundation what is the object of the seismic analysis is to Uh, estimate the what are the induced stresses in the pile elements due to to an external loading and uh, also estimate the what is the resulting bending moments on the pile that is what important we have to make uh, the piles very strong uh, to withstand the whatever the shear forces bending moments that are going to generate uh, into the ground due to the earthquake motion various methodologies can be adopted of course initially they are all uh, based on the subgrade reaction based winkler approach we can see several researchers have applied uh, this particular one here what we do the soil will be modeled as a winkler springs and pile element will be considered uh, considered uh, um, in different methods they can adopt and uh, together they can get the response of the structure and then uh, we can have the advanced continuum approach where we completely model the ground structure etc by appropriate uh, numerical models for example finite element method boundary element or finite difference method etc several studies are there and then uh, we one can adopt the physical model studies for example if the structure is very complicated and they can go for the physical model studies like 1g shaking table test and centrifuge test and full scale load test and all so these are the some pictures uh, uh, indicating the numerical modeling in continuum approach this is one study by kumar and choudhury where uh, raft from piled out foundation they considered in a plaxis 3d model uh, this is a flag 3d model another researchers xu and uh, fatahi in 2018 they considered the pile foundation continuum and where we uh, will take the, all the uh, variation of the soil profiles earthquake conditions etc Uh, and these are some examples of the physical model studies here the model of a shaking table test performed by lombardi and bhattacharya a, a large scale shaking table test uh, you can see the uh, height of the tank as 2.4 meters and different test pile the instrumentation here so that we will get the understanding of the whole thing and there are some studies on the centrifuge models adopted by different researchers you can see the different soil profiles uh this scott uh, brandenburg also delivered one lecture in our conference in 2005 and uh, there are uh, full scale uh, tests by rollins and lesbardi uh, in 2021 uh, uh, he uh, uh, rollins professor rollins has delivered an excellent lecture on the real scale blasting induced liquefaction 
and the uh, performance of pile foundations where you can see here about the 21 meters 22 meters of the length of the piles are really tested inside to uh, on site to get the uh, observations so the point here to note uh, here of course the various studies are available uh, but the amount of the time uh, required and amount of the resources required in all these things to get the complete picture uh, are uh, very uh, very huge even in the numerical model uh, complete continuum numerical modeling means we have to uh, have the expertise and we have to get the reliable soil parameters, uh, etc. These are the challenges what we have. So on the other way, uh, other way, other side, uh, the Wrinkler approach would provide uh, a reasonably very good uh, data on the performance of the uh, thing uh, in terms of uh, uh, the pile response, what we mentioned, no? The soil would can be modeled as a springs, nonlinear springs, uh, representing the realistic soil uh, behavior. Uh, so uh, the overview of the Wrinkler approach, whatever being uh, considered in this particular study, uh, is a nonlinear dynamic Wrinkler foundation. Uh, here, the complete variation of the soil behavior in terms of uh, uh, its uh, strain dependent deform displacement deformation behavior. Uh, would be captured by appropriately choosing the soil spring constants and also inputting the ground motions, whatever the ground motions are obtained at different levels that also can be provided in this particular one. So here the step one includes the independent free field ground response analysis need to be carried out and the development of the soil pile interaction through PY springs, what are the PY springs, how the, differ, the behavior would be there that can be obtained and then performing the nonlinear analysis combining the above two. So will be whatever the ground response obtained at different spring level that will be given as an input to motion to the springs. And uh, accordingly, we can obtain what is the response of the pile uh, can be studied uh, so that complete uh, uh, behavior can be obtained. In the whole scenario, this problem, uh, the uh, finding the PV springs uh, is a, a very uh, governing parameter in this one. Uh, of course, uh, there are the uh, quadal provisions uh, generally API 2007 recommendations generally can be followed to uh, find the soil springs. Uh, uh, however, the API code generally provides only for the standard soil without considering the liquefaction effect and associated uh, decrease in the strength value. And in the case of uh, liquefiable soil, there are certain modifications need to be adopted as per considering the real uh, realistic consideration. One is to neglect the total soil springs in the liquefied zones, so that area there will not be any lateral support, uh, or uh, then the treating the liquefied sand as a very soft clay, having very low strength can be taken here. Or another method is a P multiplied approach as uh, Reducing the strength of PY cows by some factor can be adopted, which was uh, uh, recommended by Vandenberg uh, et al. in 2007. So, like based on these methods, one can choose appropriately uh, the soil strength can be uh, deferred, the spring constants can be changed considering the realistic uh, scenario of the earthquake condition. So, this is the whole thing. Uh, what will be uh, what is the strategy of dealing the study? So now uh, let me take a, a quickly uh, uh, the example application what has been considered and presented in this particular paper uh, will be explained here. Uh, to sh uh, show the whole strategy how to be implemented, a pile support structure in a highly seismic zone that is the Tejpur city of the Assam zone is taken. The Assam and uh, Tejpur city is uh, uh, marked as a zone 5 as per IS 1983-2016. Uh, uh, and in this particular uh, area, there are two configurations of pile foundations were taken. One is a single pile uh, having a, a 0.6 meters diameter and a 26 meters in length, a single pile. And another group piles, uh, two by two group piles, four pile group is taken of similar geometry. And uh, the strength of the material has been taken as M25 grade RCC concrete material. So this is the, uh, this bottom figure will show the uh, uh, the model, uh, uh, SAP model, Wrinkler Spring model, which has been developed using the SAP uh, 2000 uh, uh, is shown in this particular one. So now we'll take the step-by-step -step approach uh, uh, to uh, demonstrate the whole thing. So first one is the quantification of the seismicity. 
So as you see, the particular Tezpur city, Assam city is shown in this particular area, not this zone. Uh, if you look closely, what is the seismicity of this area? What are the number of flow walls? What are the previous earthquake data? And all can be seen in this particular figure. Of course, this the data are uh, uh, obtained uh, in the, from the literature. Uh, basically, Rokhan that all has thoroughly studied this particular earthquake scenario, and also they generated a, a stochastic uh, uh, synthetic ground motion uh, for this particular area. Uh, considering a, a very high earthquake magnitude of uh, 8.7 okay so uh, so because this literature is currently available uh, for a particular area so we have adopted the rakwan et al ground motion whatever is uh, recommended uh, in this paper considering the all the seismicity of the area uh, and uh, other parameters so uh, that's about uh, uh, taking into consideration of uh, the seismicity and next is the seismic site characterization and ground response analysis second stage so if you see the soil profile at the particular site it comprises of uh, three predominant layers uh, of course loose sand uh, up to the top of five meters and then uh, a clay type of soil uh, which is up to uh, a red soil which is represented here which is extending up to about uh, 10 meters and uh, below that uh, uh, we have about uh, 14 meters of uh, uh, highly high dense sand and below the uh, rocky type uh, strata has uh, obtained. We can see the SVT and value profiles here and uh, VS shear wave elastic profiles here, uh, uh, which represents obviously the different stratification and the uh, uh, changes in the strength and stiffness, etc. This is a uh, standard geotechnical characterization. As we are dealing with the uh, earthquake and associated effect, dynamic soil properties, dynamic characterization is important. So in terms of the shear wave velocity, of course, it is shown then. And then additionally, we need to have the strain dependent dynamic properties, particularly, which are the shear modulus and damping ratio uh, for the particular uh, site we need to uh, determine. Generally, what we tend to do is uh, uh, when the site specific data, reason specific data is not available, whatever is available in the literature, which has been developed for uh, other part of the country, we tend to use, for example, season data models for the sandy type of soils. Uh, we take debris models for the clay type of soils. We generally tend to take. Uh, but uh, some of the our papers indicated that uh, uh, the necessity of uh, 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 size-specific characterization and uh, their quantification is very essential to get the realistic picture of the uh, ground performance. So uh, with that uh, uh, requirement, uh, laboratory experiments of the soils which are collected from the regions uh, have been thoroughly studied by various type of dynamic soil characterization, then uh, bend element testing, resonant column and cyclic tidal testing and dynamic simple shear testing. Of course, uh, uh, any two combinations can be taken either bend element and uh, cyclic tidal uh, or resonant column and cyclic tidal because we need to have the low strain phenomenon uh, behavior and high strain behavior to capture the complete uh, uh, variation of the shear strains. You can see here, uh, the damping ratio is increasing with the shear strains and uh, shear modulus, modulus reduction curve is reducing uh, with the shear strains. So we have to capture complete thing. Uh, so here, this particular figure will also indicate what are the strain ranges a particular test can be used, uh, can be seen here accordingly, we can adopt uh, this particular testing program. So these are various laboratory experiments. And uh, uh, as mentioned, uh, Dr. Pradeep, for his PhD study, he has tested uh, four different types of soils, two types of clays and two types of uh, sands. Uh, uh, in this particular study, we have we need to have one sandy type of soil, one the red soil, the clay type of soil. You can see the grain size distribution of the clay soil, that's the red soil. And uh, BS is the Brahmaputra sand, which is the uh, uh, sandy soil pro profile in this particular region. Uh, this is the soil profiles. And these are the, some typical results what were obtained uh, as part of the dynamic characterization and uh, which have been uh, published in it various uh, publications for, uh, for any further information, one can uh, go through these uh, uh, documents. Uh, this is a, uh, a comprehensive data for G by G max and damping, ratio, damping curves. You can see here this particular data so, which has been published in 2019 in the uh, Frontiers in Geodetal Engineering book chapter. Uh, you can see here the bended element tests and resonant column tests were put together. 
and here the dynamic she, uh, she, uh, simple shear test results were put together so that to get the complete picture of the uh, data of g by g max cows for the complete range of the strains is obtained similarly you can see the uh, damping ratio cow variation uh, for the over the wide range of the strains can be seen here similarly there is another publication which used the uh, resonant column test data and cyclic trajectory test data for a particular soil to to get completely capture the complete uh, uh, modulus response and also uh, the damping ratio response the important finding from our studies uh, is that uh, when we test the uh, soils for the very high uh, seed strain levels the damping ratio is uh, decreasing beyond the 1% uh, strain levels uh, only few uh, literature have reported such behavior which need to be taken care for the uh, consideration the analysis so uh, uh, referring to the earlier figures the finally data what we have chosen for this particular study you can see here this is the red soil having the plus index of 20% sandy soil having the different confining pressures what could be the g, g by g max values and what be the damping ratio values are shown here and the particular nonlinear pore water pressure generation models have been uh, used as per this figures so the data obtained from this dynamic characterization has been used to get the ground response analysis that is the site response analysis using the deep soil deep soil uh, deep soil is a equivalent linear or nonlinear uh, approach uh, for obtaining the ground response is a a open source program which is uh, having the lot of features to get the ground response uh, you can see the soil profile here we already discussed about the earthquake data so these both the things uh, in uh, along with the input parameters whatever obtained from the dynamic characterization in terms of the vs or g max and g by g max curves and damping ratio curves and liquefaction parameters in terms of the pore water generation model etc would be taken and uh, ground motion whatever was selected uh, from the recon that all is originally as uh, 0.138 g level uh, but to to represent a different scaled motion the ground motions are modified to scale to 0.05 g and 0.24 g to represent the three different earthquake motions and uh, ground response analysis has been conducted to get the how the peak ground accelerations were changing along with the depth of the things you can see the pga levels are changing here uh, for example if you see the very low g value that is black dot line indicates the 0.05 g amplification clearly seen uh, whereas uh, uh, for the high g the 0.24 g level it is amplified up to here and then it is deamplified this deamplification is due to the uh, we can see here the shear strains uh, peak displacements are increasing pore water pressure ratio or increase that means it indicate the liquefaction at this particular elevation that is the reason from this ground response analysis one will also obtain the what is the ground motions at different elevations here uh, as the bedrock at 20 meters 15 meters 10 meters 5 meters and surface ground motion if you look closely into this ground motions uh, this is point 138 g that means the blue line where it indicated here no in this particular figures that is the point, corresponding to point 138 g So if you look into the 5 meter and surface ground motion you can see uh, after some part time the uh, frequency content is totally deferred when you compare to the other uh, uh, ground motions at the other shallow depth that means here pore water pressures are significantly shooted up and uh, strains are more and more damping so you see the resp ground response is totally deferred these captured uh, these uh, behavior should be incorporated directly into the a ground motion so what we the accelerations what we obtain the corresponding displacement stress would be directly given as an input to the uh, the spring models to get the complete uh, uh, ground uh, response of the pile formation here if you see the uh, two just to di uh, differentiate between the two different g level how the behavior so the point 05g you can see the red line indicates the pore water pressure ratio there is no increase in the pore water pressure ratio here and this uh, uh, shear strains are there very low shear strains are there here and shear stress and shear strain uh, the loop hysteresis loop is uh, simply linear there is not much damping here whereas when we uh, did the oh, sir, analysis, Krishna, yeah. see the time 
yeah okay 25 minutes all right uh, okay i am getting 30 minutes how much i am getting madam initially we planned the uh, 25 minutes okay okay, okay. take some time then fine fine okay uh, so uh, this is the uh, uh, round response pore water pressure ratio increase and the shear strains you can see here 0.24g uh, level the shear strains are very high here you can see about 8% of the shear strain and whereas 0.05g will have we had very 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 low shear strain levels this and also you can see the hysteresis loop of the shear stress and shear strains uh, highly non linear behavior and uh, more damping etc this is the whole behavior could be captured in the ground response analysis so uh, now coming to the integrated seismic analysis so the winkler spring model analysis has been modeled uh, using the uh, sap 2000 model uh, this is the uh, sap 2000 typical model is shown before adopting the particular model for our study uh, there is a validation of the uh, model is essential so uh, uh, it was adopted to uh, uh, verify the bolanger et al 1999 this particular paper uh, presented both the centrifuge model test as well as a uh, uh, winkler spring approach method also uh, results so both results were available the data were taken and all the uh, models were uh, simulated to verify the particular thing this particular slide shows the validation of these particular uh, data so we can see the experimental data and uh, bnwf model data from from bowlanger et al they whatever the results obtained and what are the data of the current study they are compared they are reasonably uh, compared well uh, to uh, simulate the behavior so with that confidence what we got we went uh, ahead to study the uh, two pile foundations what is the single pile and uh, a group pile uh, this is the what are the spring constants what are the deviating stress uh, and axial strain in the normal uh, pile springs were obtained as per this one uh, in the cyclic tension test after the liquefaction a post liquefaction strength also has been uh, determined uh, as per this curve this is what the uh, directly deviating stress and axial strain data this data has to be used to calibrate get the spring parameters which were obtained and modeled uh, to uh, give into the spring parameters so now we can see the uh, results obtained from the uh, integrated analysis of uh, pile deformations at different elevations are shown here what is the pile displacement and pile bending moment under different uh, g levels uh, are shown here uh, by clearly we can see here uh, at high g level 0.138.24 g uh, high very high deformations and bending moments which is obviously due to the uh liquefied uh, stratification on the reduced spring values uh, uh, the const contrast between the spring stiffness values has been uh, shown here so this particular uh, uh, slide shows the uh, results from both the single pile and two by two group pile analysis uh, we can see here uh, pile displacement in terms of pile displacement when there is a no liquefaction condition Uh, the the single pile uh, resulted a very small deformation uh, whereas the group pile because of the massive pile cap at surface uh, and its uh, small moment also resulted into some slightly higher displacement that is 1.5 mm to 5 mm uh, but when the liquefaction was there uh, in that condition uh the pile cap behaved very well and uh, only very marginal difference in the deformation can be seen here whereas a single pile uh, led to very larger displacement the same thing can be seen in the other things also similarly the bending moment uh, behavior also uh, when we are having the liquefying solve when you are using the group piles uh, they act like a rigid structure and perform much uh, better uh to resist the earthquake loads uh, that's uh, the advantage what we can get here yeah so with that i'm uh, concluding my talk so what we tried is a integrated approach for seismic analysis as a simplified method uh, is presented here so various components have been discussed and uh, there is a huge contrast of response is possible at the junction of the liquefiable non liquefiable soils which was uh, reported in this particular one Uh, and uh, the point to be noted is two by two uh, pile group yielded less uh, 
uh, yielded less means deformations are very less compared to a single load under the liquefiable condition. Uh, the whole thing simplified uh, BNWF based integrated analysis. Uh, it seems to simulate reasonably well uh, for the thing and which has been used by different researchers across the globe. Uh, many of the structural engineers, of course, uh, they adopt. Uh, the advantage of this one is it's easy to use 1D programs actually. It does not require high competition programming skills uh, and they can be adopted for designing of the low new structures as well, the qualification of the existing structures of uh, moderate importance. Uh, for any high important structures and where the budget and uh, is available, one need to go for the uh, sophisticated size specific analysis and continuum analysis. So with that, uh, I thank you all for your uh, patient hearing. Uh, sorry, Chairman, if I exceeded uh, a couple of minutes, uh, etc. Thank you. Very nice, exhaustive lectures. Um, that is compiling from top to bottom, uh, from earthquake to till that, uh, how that uh, pile or superstructure behaves like that, uh, you have given it. Uh, thank you very much. We'll have the question answer at the end of this sessions uh, will be taken care by our coach.